The Valve Steam Deck has been out for a while now and it's very popular. Valve themselves claim that it's the most powerful handheld system around with its ability to easily access and play your Steam library, including many AAA games at good levels of performance. For the cost of $399, it's certainly a very compelling argument indeed. But we're not here to talk about AAA games running on the Steam Deck, we're here to talk about emulation. Now the great news here is I've had my Steam Deck for about six weeks now and I had it with me when I was moving house and I've had a lot of time to play around with it and really get familiar with the hardware. I didn't want to just kind of get the hardware and start making a video, you know, a few days after. So I've had some really good time with the Steam Deck over the last six weeks or so. And in today's episode, we are going to take a look specifically at original Xbox emulation running on the Steam Deck. And the plan here is I'm going to cover the different systems emulation over a series of videos because I don't think it's really appropriate just having a one video that covers the entire emulation selection of games. I think it does require a little more deep diving when it comes to this stuff. Now, OG Xbox is something that was probably on top of my list when it comes to emulation on the Steam Deck. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about Switch and Dreamcast and PlayStation 3? Well, all those things will definitely be up there and they'll definitely be covered. But original Xbox is something that has always had its problems over the years. When we talk about OG Xbox emulation, it's something that we know that has had a pretty rocky road when it comes to emulation. In fact, only in recent times in the last three or four years are things finally starting to come together when we talk about OG Xbox emulation. And OG Xbox games running on the Steam Deck is certainly not a slam dunk when it comes to emulation. Recall that the Steam Deck is running an AMD CPU Zen 2 architecture between 2.4 and 3.5 GHz as well as an RDNA 2 GPU running between 1 and 1.6 GHz and the APU power is between 4 and 15 watts with 16 GB of DDR5 onboard RAM. Now my Steam Deck is the 512 GB high speed NVMe SSD model which is the one that I ended up picking up because I wanted to get the fastest model that you could get. Now with that said, the emulator that we're going to be using for OG Xbox is known as XMU or Zemu. Now we've definitely covered Zemu or XMU on the channel before. In fact, we did a video of it about a year ago talking about the improvements to that emulator. And since then, the compatibility list of XMU has continued to improve with about 80% of games are considered playable now, which is a pretty high number. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that those games are going to run well on the Steam Deck, but XMU is definitely the best choice when it comes to running Xbox emulation on the Steam Deck itself. In order to install XMU, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can go the route of installing Emu Station, which is something that a lot of people told me about, and this is the way that I did it. And really the reason why I set up XMU in this fashion is to have a nice clean interface where you can actually have shortcuts, direct shortcuts to your games, which is what you're seeing here with this nice you know, cover flow. And that's a pretty cool way to do it. Now, another way to do it is simply just to install XMU from the packages that are available to install on the Steam Deck. And you can certainly do this as well. Now, installing XMU is pretty easy to do. However, I will say that there are some additional pieces that you need to install when it comes to running this emulator. And I will leave a link to the XMU website where it really kind of walks you through exactly all the pieces that you need in order to run OG Xbox games. There's definitely a learning curve here and this like most things emulation does require some tinkering, but that is the great thing about the Steam Deck itself. It really is an open platform where you can pretty much do anything you want. You can even put the system into desktop mode, connect the mouse and keyboard, and it's at the end of the day, it's almost like a PC at that point where you can pretty much kind of copy files, run Explorer and, and move things around, run a web browser and pretty much get what you need installed on the Steam Deck. But I will say that there is definitely a learning curve when it comes to setting up XMU. So I'm going to showcase these games and how well they run on the Steam Deck using the latest version of XMU as of the making of this video. Now I will say I've done no other tweaks or no other config changes or nothing else has been modified on the Steam Deck. This would be your experience if you just downloaded the latest version of XMU, installed it and then started playing some games. So I really wanted to keep this as stock as possible. But one thing I will say is I was quite impressed. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of the games. 
First up, I had to try out Halo Combat Evolved, and other than some minor hitches here and there when it came to smoke and fog effects, the game runs really well at 60 frames per second. And one of the great things about running XMU on the Steam Deck is that it sets up your controller layout quite nicely. Playing Halo on a handheld is a bit of a surreal moment for me, but it's here and it's fantastic. Now one of the interesting things about XMU on a fast PC is that you can increase the internal resolution scale significantly. However, trying this on the Steam Deck immediately tanked the frame rate, even at 2x resolution, which would put the game at 960p. So my recommendation here is that you stick with 1x internal resolution scaling at all times. But in the end, this is Halo on a handheld. I can't complain. This is absolutely fantastic. Another game that ran near flawless for me was Ninja Gaiden Black. Again, running on the Steam Deck is quite incredible considering the trademark 60 frames per second silky smooth gameplay and it's all here, no issues at all. XMU and the Steam Deck is quite the combination. Next up, we had to try Jet Set Radio Future, another must-own title for the OG Xbox, and it ran really well. Most of the time, it maintained its 60 FPS frame rate. However, when pressing the boost button, the frame rate completely tanks into the low teens. Now, according to the XMU compatibility list, this is a known issue. So this is not a Steam Deck issue. If and when this issue is addressed, it will carry over to the Steam Deck, which is quite cool. The next game I tried was Time Splitters 2, one of my favorites of the OG Xbox era. Now, I will say that I only played through the Siberia stage, but the frame rate was solid with no graphical issues and the controls themselves felt great on the Steam Deck. I should mention here that even things like Rumble is supported on the Steam Deck on XMU, and this is really a nice touch. Now, I will say that things aren't perfect when it comes to XMU. I tried a few games that fared worse. First up was Conker's Live and Reloaded. Graphically, the game looks superb on the Steam Deck, but the frame rate is very choppy to the point where it's completely unplayable. Now, the interesting thing here is that at times, the game will smooth out at 60 FPS, but then all of a sudden, for seemingly no reason at all, the game will slow down once again. And I'm really unsure about what's happening here. This doesn't appear to be a shader issue, Rather, it appears to be something internal to the emulation. Now, this one was certainly a bit of a disappointment, as I would consider it one of the must-own OG Xbox games to play, and having it run on the Steam Deck would be great fun. But I guess for now, you can always fall back to Conker's Bad Fur Day on the N64. Another game that had some slowdown was Outrun 2. This one had enough slowdown and frame pacing issues to move it into the not recommended pile. There's glimpses here, but unfortunately, this one does not run very well on the Steam Deck. And again, this is most likely an internal emulator issue rather than the hardware itself. Half-Life 2 was another game that graphically looked good, but was very sluggish, dropping into the 20s. Like Conker's Live and Reloaded, there were moments in the game where the emulator caught up and ran at full speed, but this was the exception for the most part. And again, hopefully these issues can be addressed in a future XMU update. But things certainly improve from here. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2X, on the other hand, runs really well. This is the exclusive OG Xbox version, and I was curious to try it out. Very responsive controls, solid frame rates, and overall very happy that it's running on the Steam Deck. This is one game that I always go back and love to play. Now I did try a few more games to round this out. Rally Sport Challenge 2 is one of the best earlier racing games around. Developed by DICE, it's one of the games that pushes the OG Xbox hardware to the limit. And I'm happy to report that it runs great on the Steam Deck. There are some graphical issues though, and again, this is a XMU specific issue that has been documented, and if and when it's fixed, it will carry over here. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks was an interesting game, although it runs at 60 frames per second and it appears as though everything is smooth, 
The game is running at half its frame rate for some reason. I think this is a long-standing emulation issue. That's probably something that the developers are well aware of. And to round out testing, the last game that I tried was a Toji One. This is an early From Software game that was published by Sega exclusively for the original Xbox. This game runs really, really great at 60 frames per second, and I didn't notice any stuttering or frame issues whatsoever. But as you can see, the main character model has been masked out in black, and there is seemingly no way to resolve this. But this is a minor issue, the game is perfectly playable, and it's definitely one of my favorites on the original Xbox, including the sequel, Atoji 2. So what are my thoughts on OG Xbox emulation running on the Steam Deck? Well, if you want to run Halo, Ninja Gaiden Black, Jet Set Radio Future, games like that, you're going to be in good hands. The system will do it exceptionally well, and you'll have a great experience running those games on a handheld platform. However, Due to the nature of original Xbox emulation, even though it is getting better and it's continuing to improve month after month, there is still a lot of games that don't run at the level that we would expect them to. And that's not the fault of the Steam Deck. It's really just the maturity of original Xbox emulation. It is getting better, but I will say that you may want to take a close look at the compatibility list on the XMU website before you decide to jump in and start looking at XMU on the Steam Deck because your results may vary depending on the game that you want to play right now. I would say all the games that I tested, half of them didn't really run very well for me but the other half ran almost perfectly and that is definitely a good sign even though many games are considered playable on xmu your mileage will certainly vary so i would say check out the compatibility list make your own thoughts and conclusions based on that but it was really fun to take a look at original xbox emulation running on the steam deck things are only going to continue to improve the emulator is continuing to be maintained and updated and yeah, I mean, I would expect things to improve. So we'll definitely revisit this, you know, maybe in six months uh, from now and see how things are progressing, see if some of these issues have been addressed. I am hopeful that those will be, but we're going to continue to look at other emulators on the Steam Deck over the coming weeks. Xbox 360 is one that I definitely want to take a closer look at as well as PlayStation 3. But for now, guys, we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.